Sorry I'm late. An acute case of pyrrhea. Ah, uh, yes. That seems to be going around. Dr. Johnson, take a seat. Thank you. Do you know why we have asked you here today, Doctor? I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure it has something to do with your bright smiles. Dr. Johnson, this is no time for levity. Sorry, just trying to lighten up the room. I guess I'm just different that way. That's not the only way you're different, is it? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Really? Do you recognize this? Sure. What about it? I think you know what it's about. You've repeatedly gone against the recommendations of your peers. Are we going over this again? Yes. And we are not leaving until we all come to a consensus. Not until all five of us have a joint statement. Not four out of five. Let me read something to you. Four out of five dentists recommend sugarless gum for those patients who chew gum. How does that look to other doctors? Do four out of five podiatrists recommend shoes for their patients who wear shoes? Well, do four out of five optometrists recommend glasses for patients who wear glasses? No, but- Do four out of five gynecologists recommend- I think I've heard enough examples. There is no clinical evidence that people who practice proper dental hygiene can't chew sugared gums. That's not the point. We know that. We also know that people don't brush directly after meals. Or after they drink coffee or tea. The point is, we're not on the same page. Surely you do not think that there is no room for disagreement among reasonable people. What is reasonable, Dr. Johnson? Is it reasonable just to try and go your own way? This is ridiculous. I'm leaving. Oh. Tie him. Show him the instruments. I've got the pick. I've got the drill. I've got the stickers. What do you hope to accomplish here? We're gonna make sure no other dentists fall out of line. There's no room for independent thought when it comes to sugarless gum. Begin your work. Now, four out of four dentists recommend sugarless gum for those patients who chew gum.